Life Changing Center, we are so happy that you are with us and you are worshiping with us on today. Whether you are worshiping with us on Sunday or Monday or Tuesday, we're just so happy that you have taken the opportunity just to tune in and just to worship the Lord with us. Truly, we've had an amazing time thus far, but um, we are getting ready to go into the Word of God. I believe that God has something special to say to us, and He wants to talk to us as we journey along and as we take a break um, from society and from what the world is doing. I believe that he has something special for us. So I'm going to ask that you go ahead and gather those folks. If you're gathering them in your house, if you're gathering them virtually, go ahead and tag and share and tag their name in the comments. So just get them in, in the door. I want you to do that um, right now. We are going to James chapter 3. Uh, we're going to read the 8th verse and um, go down to the 11th verse. So get your Bibles, James 3, verse 8. Let's bow our heads and just pray wherever you are. Dear God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for being a gracious God to us throughout this worship experience. Um, we thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for touching us. We thank you for allowing us to experience you in ways that we haven't experienced you before. God, we thank you for always being there, always being a listening ear. But God, I'm thanking you right now for all the things that you have done for us in the past, the present, and also in the future. God, guide our hearts and allow us to be able to see and to feel you in a very real way. God, I'm asking that you allow me to decrease that way you may increase so that your word may fall on good ground that you will get the glory, not me, but you. You will get the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name that we pray, amen. All right, we're going to James, James 3, 5. Actually, we're going to read 8 through um, 11, 8 through 11. Word of the Lord says, but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Read the twelfth. Can the fig tree my brethren, bear olive berries, neither a vine figs. So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Topic today we're going to dive in on is, um, and this is a question I need you to let me know if you're with me. So go ahead and put it in the comments, put it in, share it and say this and just say it's a question. Um, well, not really a question, it's a statement. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't mean to say that. Didn't mean to say that. Our sermon series, we've been talking about matters of the heart and what's really going on inside of us. What's really going on inside of us. What's happening on the inside. What we say determines what's in our hearts. Many of us are very quick to say something and not paying attention to what we're saying, and then it ends up spewing out. And then we have to catch ourselves and say, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Well, you actually meant it because that's what you were thinking. That's what you was, that, was, that was what was in your heart. I want to deal with that, what you say, and also what's in your heart. And I have to ask you another question. What have you said lately that someone <clears throat> questions your character? What have you said lately where you, you, you are now thinking as you're driving back home and say, did I say something wrong? Because the truth of the matter is, if you're, if you're around, let's say, for instance, you're at a, at a party, at a dinner party or whatever, and you are um, just chatting or whatever, we get, you know, into the fill of things, and then we just start to say something, and then, you know, how many of us have actually... Um, been around people and they said something and it threw you off. It kind of like 
you had to like back up a little bit and say, wait a minute, did, did they really just say that? Living today's time, um, I have personally experienced this as well. I experienced it at work. And I had to catch myself and be like, whoa, wait, wait a minute, did they really just say that? Uh, it makes me judge their character. It makes me question their character. Do they really um, mean what they say? Are they really saying these things? And are they just trying to just, you know, put off because of the crowd? But the truth of the matter is, if they said it and they really meant it, that's what they felt in their hearts. That's what, they're meant. That's what they meant in their hearts. So now I ask that same question to you. What have you said that has made someone back up a little bit and say, wait a minute, is this the Jonathan that I know? Is this the Sandra that I know? Is this the Susanna that I know? Is this the, the Jay that I know? Is, is, is that... They make you question yourself. Now, I, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Well, you said it because that's what was in your heart. There are two types of people, though. There are those that care what people say, that care what they say, and, they, and there are those that don't care. <laughs> yeah, you have some people that are like, you know, I'm going to watch what I say, so I'd rather not say it. Um, you know, your mom used to tell you always when you was growing up, if you don't have anything nice to say, what? Don't say nothing at all. I'm going to watch what I say. I'm not going to say it. I know I feel it. I know it. So I'm just going to be quiet. You ever been around someone um, <clears throat> and you had to ask yourself, why are you so quiet? You had to ask them, why, why, why are you so quiet? You normally, ain't this, you normally ain't this quiet. Well, the reason why is because if they say how they feel, they're going to say exactly, and it may hurt you. It may hurt you. So there are those that they're going to watch what they say, but then you have some that I'm just going to say, hey, I'm going to say how I feel no matter what you think. If this makes you feel bad, whatever. If this makes you question my character, maybe we weren't meant to be friends. There are some folks that are out there that do not care what you think about them. So they will say whatever comes to their mind. They have no problem saying what it is. I um, <laughs> know some people personally, and they use this a lot because this is really them. They, they will address you on site, meaning that if it's something crazy that you say, you're going to catch it on site, meaning that as soon as you say it, there's a response coming right back. There are many of us trying to defend certain things that are happening in this world, and you're going to end up walking into the right person. And they're just going to say exactly how they feel because they don't mind sharing what's in their heart. They don't mind it. But I want to talk a little bit about those folks that they have those issues in the heart. And they don't want to just go out and just say it. They don't want to just launch out and say it. They're trying to protect the things because they want to not only just protect themselves, but they also want to protect the next person. But it still doesn't change what's in the heart. Many of us are still challenged because we are still feeling the effects of what's dealing with us inside of our hearts. See, it's okay to, to feel that way. It's okay to be that way. But at some point, at some point, it's not, it goes beyond that I'm just going to keep my mouth closed. Now it goes to the place that, God, I need you to work inside of me and deal with the things that are in my heart so I don't even think these things so that if I mistakenly say something, it won't be taken out of context because I didn't feel that way to start with. So God, deal with the things that are inside of my heart. I need you to heal that broken heart. We've been talking about matters of the heart, things that we think, um, dealing with the broken heart, many other afflictions, uh, other righteous. So we are being weighted. Uh, we have heavy hearts. They have all these things that are going on. But the more you have to deal with, the likelihood that you're going to end up saying something out the way. I've heard this phrase a lot. You say, I hope she comes up to me because I'm going to tell her a piece of my mind. The only reason why they say that is because they know what's in their mind. They know what's in their hearts. But see, the thing is, before you can even fix that, you have to do something. I know some people, they're like, I, I need you, God, to, to deal with my heart. And if that's you, go ahead and just say it. I need God to deal with my heart. Just, you know, or just go ahead and say, I need God to deal with my mouth. It's, it's what it is. If you feel that way and you know that, go ahead, acknowledge it. Put it in the comments. I want to deal with that for a second. Because in order for 
God to deal with it, he has to do a couple things. Yes, he wants to deliver you. Yes, he wants to do that. But in any place that you go where they talk about counseling and all these other things, before you can even ask for the help, before you even go down that road of the help, you have to first recognize that you have a problem. You have to first recognize that, hey, there is something going on that is not right. Whenever your body begins to do some things, um, let's say high blood pressure or whatever, you'll begin to feel it. You'll begin to feel it. But most people, they try to put it off and they put excuses to it. Oh, I just need to lose like 10 pounds. I'll, I'll be good. I just need to sleep it off. I'll be good. They never want to recognize that they have an issue. The first step to the healing process is first, you have to acknowledge and you have to recognize that you actually have a problem. So we've been talking about all the things of the matters of the heart, but I need you to do something for me. If that is you, I need you to acknowledge it. You don't have to type it in the comments. You can just go ahead and just say it inside your spirit. Just say, God, I acknowledge that I have a problem. God, I acknowledge that I have a heart issue. I have a heart problem, and I need you, God, to deal with it. There is nobody else that can deal with the thing that's going on in my heart right now except for you, God. So, God, I need you to deal with my heart. I need you to deal with my mind. I need you to deal with my soul. I need you to deal with my tongue because I don't want to come off and say something. Yes, but in order for me to be safe and make sure that even if I say something out of turn, in order for you to know that it's still going to be all right, it's because my heart is clear. My heart is clean. God, deal with my heart. So the first step is recognizing that you actually have an issue. You have to recognize that you have an issue. And then David did something very, very special. David says in Psalms 51:10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. The first thing he said, he said, Create in me. David didn't go out and ask God, say, God, can you please just, you know, um, just give my heart a tune-up? <laughs> he didn't ask God to give him a tune-up. He didn't ask God to just, if you can, just go ahead and just turn it just a little bit. It's out of whack, so can you just rotate it a little bit? See, many of us just want, we still want to be angry at the world. We still want to be angry at people that, that done us wrong. We want to be angry at our exes. We want to be angry at our family members. We want to be angry at our friends. We don't even want to feel. So David did something. He said, create in me a clean heart. Don't touch up the one I have. Don't rotate it. Don't give me an oil chain. Don't give me a tune-up. Don't, don't, you know what? The heart that I got, is, it ain't no good. Create in me a clean heart. But I need you to do something. I need you to create and when you create it, God, just don't create one, but I need it to be clean because I don't want to have these thoughts towards my brothers and my sisters. I don't want to have these thoughts about what's going on in this world today. I understand that it's a trying time. I understand like we've been talking, those afflictions begin to stack up. But God, I don't want personally those things to hinder me from seeing you at the end of the day. So in order for that to work, in order for that to happen, God, I need you to do something. I need you to create in me a clean heart. I want to talk to those that can recognize and that can acknowledge that my heart has been damaged. I've been through one too many relationships that turned out the wrong way. I've been through one too many jobs that turned out the wrong way. I've been in a neighborhood that this thing just, it just ain't working out. I've been in too many classrooms. Things just ain't working out. I, I need anybody that's in the comments, anybody that's watching, anybody that's here that can, that can really, really acknowledge that, God, my heart has been damaged, but God, I need you to create in me a clean heart. I need you to create in me a clean heart, God. I'm not going to go anywhere either. I'm going to stay in right here until you do it. I need somebody with boldness just to declare right now that, God, I need you to create a clean heart, and I'm not moving until you do it. I don't want to feel this way to my brother and sister. I don't want to have these thoughts in my mind. I need a clean heart, and I don't want you to go ahead and just give me a tune-up. I need you to create a new and a fresh. God, I need a clean heart. I need a clean heart. I can't do it by myself. 
I've tried. <laughs> Many of us have gone to counselors, and counselors are great. I believe that you, you, if you need a counselor, if you need a counselor, go ahead and get it. It's a marriage counselor, whatever it is, go ahead and get it. But I need you not to forget who is the wonderful counselor. You still need God to come in and fix some things. You still need God to touch your heart. You still need God to touch your soul. You realize that you said one too many things that were bad and that turned out the wrong way. And that you realize that God is the only answer. God is here for you. God wants to hear. He, he hears you. <laughs> we talked the other week. God sees you. He hears you. But this is the catch. He wants to deliver you as well. But before he can deliver you, he needs to understand that you know what's going on with yourself. He needs to know that you understand what's happening with yourself. If that's you, I want you to type it right now in the comments. Create in me a clean heart. Don't patch it up. I don't need no patches. I don't need no tune-ups. I need a brand new, I need a clean one. Just make sure when you create it, God, it's clean. That I have the right thoughts towards my siblings. That I have the right thoughts between my family members. And the thoughts between those that mean the most to me, to my church family. Whoever it is, God, create in me a clean heart. I'm going to pray for you right now. Because I want to agree with you that God is going to be working on your heart. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for what you have done for us in this moment. We thank you for what you have, that you have talked to the matters of our heart. That even though we may have wanted to say something, we have been compressing it. Even the times that we didn't compress it, and now people look at us differently. We are letting you know, God, that we acknowledge that we have a problem. But God, we're also acknowledging that we can't do it without you. And God, we're coming to you and telling you that we need you right now. Don't wait till next week. God, I need a miracle in my heart right now. These feelings that I have about what's going on, of the racial injustice that's right now that's going on. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm mad. But God, fix my heart. God, fix my heart. I want to be able to live with the peace that surpasses all understanding. I understand that I should be mad right now, God. I understand that I have every reason to be. But God, I need that peace that passes all of that and gives me the peace anyway. But only you can do it. I've tried. God, I thank you. I thank you for answering our cry. I thank you for touching those that are listening, those that are watching. God, I thank you. God, you will get the honor. You will get the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I thank you for tuning in to Life Changing Center. We have enjoyed you being a part of our worship experience. But we want to take it a step further. If you don't know who Christ is, if you're not saved, we want you to connect with us. We want to walk you through that process. This is a major step, and I don't want you to take it lightly. I don't want you to just take it lightly and just think that just because I did this over the internet ways and everything, you need some direction and you need some guidance through, through life, and we want to be there to help you. So we're inviting you to connect with us. Send us a private message. Send us an email. Connect with us on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube. Just follow us and connect with us because we want to help you get through that rough patch. And we want to help you get through salvation too as well. We know salvation is for everyone. You don't have to, there's, it's a gift. There's nothing special you got to do. You ain't got this, it's a gift. And we want to help you get the gift that God has promised you. But if that is you, make sure you connect with us. And to our family, to our friends, we love you. We can't wait to see you next time. You guys be blessed.
Life Changing Center, I am so happy that you have joined us for worship today. I want to just stop for a minute and give you an opportunity that you can actually give to us. Uh, you can give and you can give to us and help us in ministry that we're doing. I always encourage anyone that's ever listening to us is that we don't have to be the place that you're giving to. But I want you to give to something that's connecting to your heart. So if Life Changing Center is that thing that's connecting to your heart, feel free to, feel free to give. We are continuing to do so many different things for the ministry and for God. We are still out in the community. We go to Trinity Rescue Mission. We can't wait to get back in there. Because of the, the, the coronavirus, we just haven't been able to get in because everything has been on lockdown. But when we get back, we're there loving on our brothers there at Trinity Rescue Mission. We're going to be downtown helping out, giving out to the homeless. We're doing, we just recently did um, some gift cards for some teachers that are trying to get their classrooms together, trying to get their virtual uh, environment together. So we are continuing to do the work that God has asked us to do. But for us to do, to continue to do much more, we need your help. We need your support. So we're going to ask that you look on. You can actually do this from your phone. So you can go to Givelify. You can go to Cash App. You can go to our website and give via PayPal. Whatever way is most convenient to you, you can do that. And I want to invite you to do that today. And I want to pray for you real quick as we pray that God not only just meets your need, but he exceeds your need. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for all the things that you have done. We thank you for where we are currently right now in this worship experience. And God, I'm asking that you continue to do things special for your children, whether they know it, whether they can tell it or whether they can feel it. God, I need you to just tap on their shoulder and just tell them that you haven't left them. God, for all those that are giving, God, I ask that you increase them. For all those that want to give and can't give, God, continue to increase them. Increase not just their finances, but, but increase their relationship with you. Allow them to be able to understand that it's because of the seed that they put in the ground that's growing up in their life after you have watered it. God, we thank you for all the things that you continue to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and we love you. We'll see you.